to a new tutorial. On this third episode, I'm going to show you how to do a bunch of really interesting things. The first thing, the first thing is to add controls for Android. That means, well, not just Android, but mobile in general. Anything that has a touch screen input system, you'll be able to use because we're going to add icons on the screen that will show up only when a mobile uh, input system is detected. So if you're on PC, you won't be able to use these icons, but when you're on your mobile device, you'll be able to control your game using these icons. So it'll be automatically uh, or automatically pop up if you are on mobile, and if not, you'll be able to use keyboard like I showed in the previous tutorial. So that's great. But before we get into all that, our player has a small problem. If we move off the side, there's nothing to stop him. There's no system in place to stop him from veering off into the depths of the unknown. And we don't want that, we want him to stay inside of this road. So we're going to add physics. First thing, we're going to add a cube. We're going to just move it around and scale it so it's the size slightly bigger than the player. And we can move it past the road. Now, make sure it's big enough. Like that. Now there's no way this player can get past this wall. We're going to add some physics. Add a rigid body component set to passive. Since this is a rectangle, we're going to add the box to save data. Now we can just Shift D to duplicate it and J Y to move it over. And once that's done, we need actually to apply physics to the player because if the physics of the walls are uh, can't detect the player, then the player will go right through it. So we can just set that to active and set it to box as well. We don't actually need to calculate any of this uh, complicated geometry, so uh, we can just set it to box because it has a minimalistic um, mesh to calculate. Now once we've done that, we can actually go and add our UI being a canvas. And this is what we're going to use to add the buttons, which will be used to control the player if we do not have a keyboard. And in this UI area, we're going to add an image. The image in question is going to be an arrow. Once you have found the arrow, you can download it from the internet. Just drag and drop it into the side panel. And in the assets area, you'll see it pop up. So once we have that, we can add an image. First thing we want to do is make sure the asset is set to the image we've just imported. This is a PNG, so it's transparent. The only problem being, it's grey on grey, so you can't actually see much, especially with YouTube compression. But I can just about make it out, and besides, you don't need to see that much of it anyway. We can go down to Anchor and set it Anchor to the left. The only trouble here is that it's actually rotated the wrong way. So I'm going to anchor it to the right, so it's rotated the right way, and I'm going to duplicate it and, rotate it and anchor it to the left this time. So that one's pointing the right way and it's fine, except this one is pointing the wrong way, it's pointing the same way as that arrow, but it should be pointing to the left. So I'm going to rotate it 180 degrees by typing in 180 in the rotation. And that looks fine, although the arrows are a bit small, so I'm going to set the height, uh, the width I mean to 250, and the height to about 200. We can apply the same values to the second arrow and uh, let's just move them in slightly so they're not s uh, perturbing the view of the player now we need to rename these this is very important make sure the left is left and the right arrow is called right that's going to be very important next so make sure you rename them and now we can just save and exit now if we go into the scene and play this you'll be able to see the arrows are visible and the walls are also visible. As you can see, the arrows are visible and they look pretty good. The only trouble being they have no logic and the walls are also visible and that's something that we don't want. So let's go and fix it. Select the wall and disable it from the viewport by clicking the arrow, the eye I mean. But if you don't have the cam this camera icon, then make sure you go to the filter button up here and select it from the menu. And this camera icon means it won't be visible in the runtime or in the render if you like. Make sure you disable that for the second wall as well and you're good to go. The next thing we want to do is actually set up this script for the um for the icons. Here we have a script well and logic nodes anyway, not scripts, 
well not in Unity. We have our rotator in the wheel, we have the player controls for both the arrows and the A and D key. But now we want to do something different, we want to add the icon logic. So we can duplicate the value for the left and right um, arrows and we can add an on canvas element. It's not, there we go. And once we have the on canvas element plugged in, ah, I duplicated the wrong element. We can duplicate, du duplicate the on canvas element and plug it into the second one. That looks good. The only trouble is we have to name which element we want to collect to click. As I said, naming comes in very handy. So rename it to the names that you set the icons to, left and right. But we need to make sure it's set to down. If the status is not set to down, then it won't register long presses. And if that's not registered, then it'll be a bit hard to control because you have to frantically click to move the player 0.1 unit, which will be a bit hard. Now we can actually go and clean the project. Instead of playing it directly, actually we'll play it directly. And as you can see, we can now use the arrows to actually move the player. And this will be great. The only trouble is they're showing up even though I'm on the PC. And I don't want this to work like this. I want this to only show up when I'm on a mobile browser. And if it's not a mobile browser, then I have to use the A and D key or the arrow keys. So let me close that down and we're going to set it up right now. What we're going to do is we're going to look for a on event on initialize, which means as soon as the game starts up, as soon as it opens, it's going to do this. And what it's going to do is it's going to detect the mobile browser. Basically, this is going to ask a question. And we need to have a logic in place to be able to answer it. So once we open the app, once it's started, it's going to do one of two things. It's going to ask the question to the browser are you a mobile browser? If it's true, if it says yes on the mobile browser, then it's going to do something. And this something is going to be, it's going to set the canvas visible. And it's going to set the elements left and right to visible. Just make sure you check visible. And that's what it's going to do if it's true. And if it's false, it's not going to do anything. It's just going to go, eh, okay. And uh, yeah, so if it's true, if we are on a mobile browser, it's going to set the buttons visible. But they're already visible, so the last thing we need to do is to change that. Select the buttons, uncheck visible, and save the scene. Uh, why is it set it to 60? Okay. I have a slight inclination problem here. It should be fine. Okay, uh, we can now exit out of that, and yeah, it's fine. Let's just restart that. It was a small bug, and save it. So now they're both uh, in a invisible at the start, and only when the mobile browser is detected that they will be set to visible. So let's just check that everything works properly. And as you can see, it doesn't look like they're showing up. Which is a good thing, which means that the logic works. It means that as soon as you use a mobile browser, they will show up. And we added the logic so that we can't exit the road and we're forced to live a long, painful, suffering life of watching this road go past and not being able to leave. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you want me to make more, then make sure you subscribe because that encourages me. I haven't published as much as I wanted to because of uh, other issues, but I'm back now and I'll be publishing much more frequently. Thank you very much for watching and have a great day.